Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about basic definitions used in reference systems. The first thing that we have to discuss is the different shapes of the Earth or different surfaces in geodesic. Train is a surface that we see with your eyes. The place, that part of the Earth that we live on. Physical shape of the Earth, the geo mathematical shape of the Earth. Train is the surface, this is what we observe at the surface of the Earth, excluding memory structure. This surface is rather complicated. It's not possible to find a mathematical model which can describe this surface all over the Earth even locally so the only way is to uh, select some points as you see in the figure some points here on the surface of the earth and determine the coordinates of these points so that we can in a discrete form find the shape of the earth the closer these points are, the better the shape of the Earth is model. So, is the differences between this point is called resolution or spatial resolution. Spatial resolution shows that how close these points are. There are different methods for determining the shape of the Earth or the train model. You can use photogrammetry or we can use satellite images surveying methods and many other methods that we stay today is are applied another shape of the earth is the geoid or the physical shape of the earth it's an equipotential surface which has the best way to the mean sea level it extends under the continents as well to explain the concept of geoid let us begin with the definition of equipotential surface. Consider the S surface or the train and for all points at the surface of the Earth and outside the Earth, outside the surface of the Earth, gravity field will act. It means that all the masses in the gravity field of the Earth are attracted to the Earth. And this vector actually is the gravity vector. Gravity vector actually shows the direction of plumb line. We will discuss this later, but gravity is the gravitation, which is actually due to the attraction of the masses according to the Newton's law and centrifugal force due to the Earth's rotation. So gravity is actually an interaction of the gravitation and centrifugal force due to the Earth's rotation. The direction of this gravity vector is called plumb line. Plumb line, as you see here, is not a, a straight line because the mass inside the Earth is not homogeneous. It means that some places we have a heavier material than the other places. Some places we have mountains, some places we have sea, sea have valleys. They are different mass distribution and structure inside the earth. Therefore, it is not so, it is like a straight line. But uh, for this figure, I wanted just to exaggerate it that you understand this. But for a small area, its uh, curvature is not very sensitive. So any surface which is perpendicular to plumb line is called equipotential surface. Equipotential surface is a surface that the potential gravitation, gravity potential of the points at that surface is constant. And since a line, like plumb line, is, uh, is created by infinite number of points, therefore for it, we will have infinite number of equipotential surfaces. 
let me explain this a little bit further. On the right side, you can see the green, uh, the green arrows are the centrifugal forces due to the air's rotation. The red ones are the gravity attraction. So the gravitation or gravitation. As you see, interaction of these two forces, meaning the gravitation and centrifugal force, is called gravity. So it means that through around the areas that the gravity, the centrifugal force is strong, the gravity will be weaker because, for example, in equator, because of the distance from the rotation axis of the Earth, uh, we have the strongest centrifugal force, which reduces the value of the gravity. This means that the interaction of this one will be smaller, a little bit smaller on the equator. But around the polar area that we do not have centrifugal forces, the gravity will be stronger. Since the equipotential surface is perpendicular to the direction of the gravity vector, therefore they are in the form that I have plotted here. They are not circular, like circular. They are like an like ellipse, but in reality it's not an it's not ellipse because because of the mass heterogeneities inside the Earth, so also the geometry and structure of the Earth they are important. Because uh, schematically, I have plotted this to show that the equipotential surfaces are not parallel. And there are infinite number of equipotential surfaces because there are infinite number of points along the plumb line. Equipotential surfaces do not collide each other. It means that one, if they collide, it means that one point can have two potential, which is not actually true. And there is no gap. This is because the gravity field is continuous. So, so you see, the equipotential surfaces, according to this schematic figure, are smooth. smooth. Then, uh, water, water are actually moving from the equipotential surface, which is higher, to the lower equipotential surface. That's the principle due to the tangential forces. But uh, where is the lowest equipotential surface in the Earth? Yeah, it's means 11. So if you consider that C and the geoid, which has the best fit to the means 11, it extends under the continents as well. So it's the lowest potential. It means that the lowest height. This is why that we consider the geoid as the vertical datum. Datum or the zero value for the heights. As you see, the geoid is pulled a little bit up due to the masses above the geoid as well. This is a big challenge in modeling geoid is how to model this topo potential of the topographic masses above the geoid because we need the precise geometry and precise information about the mass distribution inside the topographic mass, which we don't. So, geoid is actually the physical shape of the Earth because the 72% of the Earth is covered by water, therefore by an approximation of 72%. The global shape of the Earth can be Jewish. We have already seen that the Earth's surface is very complicated and it's not possible to fit a mathematical model to, so that it can explain or approximate the whole Earth. Therefore, the physical shape of the Earth is defined, and it is a smoother than the train, uh, with 72%, uh, as I explained.
or so at the three person. As I explained, it has the can approximate the physical shape of the earth. But even do it, which is smoother than the earth surface, is not suitable for horizontal computations. For example, if you want to define distance between points, it is rather simple to define define this distance over the plane or at the surface of a noun geometric form, three-dimensional geometric form, for example, a sphere. But over the geoid, which is curvature, is changing from one point to another. is not that simple even if it is good for the height because it's the lowest possible height but not suitable for horizontal computations and horizontal horizontal quantities defining geometrical quantities like angle distances we cannot define these things over the theory therefore at the first at the first place they started to fit, they started fitting a sphere to the geoid, and in that case, they observed 11 kilometers difference between this, this sphere and the geoid, which is rather big. The discrepancy is rather large. The simplest, but in a mathematical model is quite simple because SVA can be defined only by one radius. To improve this approximation, a biaxial ellipsoid was considered. In that case, they could improve the approximation to 100 meters discrepancy. A huge or significant improvement in the shape of the S. Still, little bit 100 meters at the difference but it's quite good the mathematical model is a little bit harder because ellipse is defined or ellipse so it is defined by two axles two axes semi major axis so we show it with the a and semi minor with so we show it with b and it's also a rotation. So the sense the Earth is rotation on the ellipsoid is also the biaxial ellipsoid is rotation on the have better field. Also, after that, they try to improve this approximation by considering a triaxial ellipsoid. In that case, they come to discrepancies up to 80 meters. So 20 meters improvement, but with what price? The price of very hard mathematics or very hard geometry because triaxial ellipsoid, as its name shows, says it has three axes A, B, and C. So, the mathematical model for triaxial ellipsoid is much more complicated than the by axial ellipse. Therefore, it is more logical to select the by axial ellipsoid as the mathematical shape of the Earth.